Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Drop Frames. We got the dick hammer here. I love having you on the show because I get to say dick hammer and it's not just because I'm an asshole. It's because it's your name. It's so good. It's the best. <laughs> You're welcome. Why You're welcome. is your Twitch name not dick hammer? We need to have a conversation about this. It was. It was and it got changed, right? It got changed. All right. Yeah. <clears throat> we had a, nope, we've I'm had not going to talk about it. Yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. I was about to say everyone tweet a certain account and say give him his account. But no, we're not doing that. We're not going to revolt and riot. That's not good. There's the emote I was talking about. And nope, that's a different one. God damn it. I, I want to see that other emote. It's scarier than it me happy. It's the, the attack <laughs> A emote. Hey, that bomb just went off or the explosion just went off. Did you guys hear that or no? Yeah, I did. Yeah, yeah. it's 402. It's time for an explosion at my house every week. <laughs> it's terrifying. They knew what's happening. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. Anytime that happens, <clears throat> I know it's four o'clock, regardless of what day it is. And I can't wait for the live show in September for it to occur. Because I don't think those guys experienced well, that it. One. Dude. Yeah, isn't that terrifying? Look at look at what Toku just said in chat. That's crazy. Jesus. It's terrifying. It's a terrifying <clears throat> emote. Anyways, now that we got that emote satiated, the the need for that emote is over. We can move on with the show. Uh we got game yeah. games are starting to come out, you guys. I don't know if you realize this, but video games are back in 2017 <laughs> as of this week <laughs> and i'm excited because i actually have stuff that i enjoy playing now and it's great before we get to that uh how you been dick what, what's been going on good good not much just trying to stay sane through the summer with the kid man busy busy yeah yeah when uh when do they start back in school i would assume this month my daughter starts preschool this year so in Ooh. two weeks I'm taking her to PAX with me, and then when we get back, like the day we get back, she starts preschool. Gee, is that is that yeah. nerve wracking? Where where are you at with that? Are you just kind of like, please take my kid, or are you like, please don't take my kid? Where are you at? Uh, I, I, I have these neighbor kids across the street that are driving me up the wall. And, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm worried about the bad habits she's going to pick up from all the school kids, but we'll see how it goes. Okay. She's excited. That's what's important. <clears throat> yeah, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Yeah uh well cool i know you've been playing some xcom as have i we'll get to that well i think we'll save that for a bit uh we'll talk recent news latest news zeke you're supposed to be in a hotel room what are you doing yeah i'm supposed to be drunk in a hotel room in cologne germany i know right now i know do you want to tell the story uh <laughs> summarized i know you tweeted about it earlier uh but yeah. i'd love anytime i can shit on tsa i love doing it so let's talk about it for a bit well, I just not, see that's the thing. I wish it was TSA so we could all like join in and jump on and you know shit Damn on it. like the 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 institution of TSA. But it's not TSA. It's the actual countries that you travel to have certain restrictions as far as your passport goes that I was unaware of mm -hmm. um, because you have a passport. Like I don't know about anybody else, but my passport was valid for ten years. It's still it's still valid. Right. Right now. Um, but it's valid for 10 years. I got it 10 years ago um, in October. And uh, there's an expiration date printed, like, right on there. And I went to the uh, went to the airport, bags packed. I had my television series, like, uh, downloaded and games <laughs> downloaded. And, and I brought my, I brought my fucking, my Nintendo. I brought my iPad just to pass time because I'm really finicky when it comes to, like, you know, Wasting time. Sure. So I had all this, all this like 12, 13 hours of time wasting stuff. Um, little did I know that in in most countries in Europe, your your passport has to be valid three months from your return date. Did they? St what is the purpose of that? I do. They think uh, that you're a less for, that you're a worse for people who overstay. I guess I don't know. Like, are you a worse person because you're <laughs> you're gonna expire in three months? Then, like, I don't know. That just maybe what you just said the, is the reason. The only thing I can think of is that one of those countries is so far backed up with making sure passports get revoked, they're like three months behind. <laughs> so they're like, if, if you're about three months early, then we'll probably catch you. Okay. But Zeke, you know, I think it's it's really nice that you know you're kind of trying to play the nice public face. We all know they wouldn't let you on the plane because your fists are lethal weapons and you didn't get your license renewed. It is true. But that's that's uh, that's one of the things that was that was kind of like a throw in. They said, "Well, this passport thing and then the whole lethal weapon fists and feet and that kind of thing." 
I could, I mean, I can kill several people yeah. very quick with my hands. Yeah. Well, and also, since you have a confirmed kill count over 30, I know there's some weird red tape with that, too. Yeah. So. Yeah. <laughs> It's a little sketch. But I mean this is this is just this is just ignorance. This is something I I was not aware of. When I, didn't I got know to that. the airport. Yeah, when I got to the airport, I scanned my thing and that's the thing. You don't think about it because your your passport is valid. Like my passport is valid for 10 years. So it's not something that I that I thought about. Um and I tried and I'm not kidding. I tried to get my my passport renewed last year. Mm -hmm. And they said, "No, it has to be, in order to renew your passport, oh, God. it has to be within a certain amount of time." For, uh, before the expiration date. So I was trying to renew my passport too early. <laughs> I know, it's weird. It's very, very strange. Man. But I went in there, like, I, I want to say it was it was like a, a few months after Gamescom last year. I was like, oh, my, my passport's coming up. I should get it renewed. And I went in there, and they're like, nah, you gotta, it's got to be like within like <sighs> three or six months of your expiration date. So I was like, all right. Yeah. Waited and then I said, "Oh fuck, uh, I'll get it renewed after I come back from Gamescom this year." No, nope, it's three to six months depending on which country you're traveling to. Yeah, that's real dumb. And um, and we don't have like a, we don't have a passport office here in, in Billings, Montana. I remember I got my passport uh, in 2007 when I was going to go to Sweden for WSVG back when I was getting started in esports. And I ended up canceling the event like two months out, so I got the passport for nothing. Uh, but it expired in 2017. The reason that's important is because I didn't know this rule existed. And had I had gone to Dodger and Strippen's wedding this year in England, I probably would have had the same exact issue you did uh, when trying to get on that plane. They probably wouldn't have let me go. If, if, if that three-month rule extends over to... Uh, to England. I, I don't know if it does. Well, that's the thing. In the UK, some people were saying, no, that doesn't... That oh, not maybe it would have been fine. But in, but in Europe and Germany, they're like, yeah, the Germany, most European countries. And then people are saying, but UK doesn't do that. Maybe they don't do it. But I know Mexico doesn't. They said they said if you have a, if you have an American passport, you can go like, if as long as you're returning the day before your passport expires, you can go to Mexico at any time. That's what I like. How everyone's like, okay, we need to have at least three months. <laughs> Mexico's just like, yeah, you know what? It's cool. Well, I get yeah. Just climb oh, you, over. you got a passport? Oh, you don't have a passport? Ah, whatever. Come on over. <laughs> no, I'm just no. I'm just saying, like, like, listen, like every like countries are different. Mexico is different than than Germany. Like, I could cross the border and come back as long as it's like within the day. Do they? They? If you take like a train from somewhere else in Europe, they're gonna check your passport, right? If you take a train from like the UK to Cologne, they'll take the look at your passport. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, I figured they would. I was gonna say, why didn't you could have flown to the UK? And then trained, but no, you would have been fucked regardless. Pretty sure. It's just a shitty situation all of uh, yeah. all around. Uh, there's there's no winning there <clears throat> for anyone. And that sucks. So I'm sorry I had to go through that. They don't. What do you mean? Only need ID. Oh. Really? That actually works. Well, don't do that. I don't want you to get deported. <laughs> Is that... Does that have something to do with the fact that it's all EU and would that change with Brexit and stuff? Or is that just totally unrelated? I don't know. Out of curiosity. <clears throat> ask ask anyway, me anything about Europe. For another though. time. Ask <laughs> me anything about Europe. Yeah, Schengen. They're, they're saying this word Schengen, which I have no idea what that means. <laughs> they're just making up the words. Schengen's, the Schengen zone. The but, uh, well, it's, it, was a, it was a live and learn situation. Now I'm going to, I mean, I'm going to go get my passport renewed. And now I know that no matter what, I'm going to have a valid passport like a year out before I even go anywhere. Yeah, that's a nightmare. So. It just it just sucked, and I was in the airport. I had everything packed, and they were like, "Nope, there's nothing we can do. It's not an airline thing. It's a it's a you know a nation like a nation thing, a country thing. So you can't you can't really argue with it." So I was like, "Well, fuck." What and then type they were of? Like, uh... Well, I'll tell you what. You can go. We can get you to Denver, and then Denver has a passport office, but it's Sunday, so you're gonna have to wait till Monday, and then you might be able to get it on Tuesday. And then it's it was a lot of mites. It was a lot of like you might be able to get on Tuesday and you might get a get a go, but we're not sure and that kind of shit. So I was like, fuck this. The dent so <clears throat> I came home, crestfallen as fuck, bags just dropped them at the door, like got to my whoops. I uh I flailed my headphone cord out. Oh. Sorry. <laughs> um 
dropped him at the door, said that, wrote that little tweet, and then just fucking went radio silence because I was sulking and upset. Yeah, that's shit. That's a shitty thing, yeah. without a doubt. I didn't know they had a passport office in the Denver airport, though. Is that what they told you? I don't know if it was in Denver airport. <clears throat> oh, just in Denver. There's one close, I guess. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. So, live and learn. It'll never happen I wish, again. I wish it would have. I wish it would have handled handled the fallout differently as well. I wish it would have handled it with a little bit of a plum, a little bit of class, instead of like just fucking shutting everything out for two, three days. Eh, I gotta say, Zeke, it, it, there's no question, like JP said, it's a terrible situation, but I can tell you this, you have probably informed literally thousands of people <laughs> of this three-month thing that didn't know it before. Me being yeah, one of them. Yeah, I, if I was yeah. in your position, I would have done exactly the same thing. I had no idea that there was a three-month thing. So... Yeah, thanks, if nothing else. Yeah. <laughs> I know it sucks, but... Thanks for no, being the guinea pig, Zeke. If I help anyone not go through this, then I I feel good about it. It's fine. I yeah. think you, you probably helped a lot of people. Yeah, mm. for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, There was, I guess, while we're kind of on the topic of Gamescom a little bit, there was uh, bits of news that came out of there. Uh, the biggest one, which is a gigantic surprise to me, and I'm curious to see if you guys feel the same, because apparently I'm dumb for feeling this way. Age of Empires 4 is like the biggest news to come out of Gamescom by a large, large margin, and people were fucking losing it over that game. And I had no idea that it had that much fanfare about it. Am I just completely off base? Is that like a standard common thing that Age of Empires is just jai fucking normous? I think it's more that it's it's as classic as it gets. I mean, Age, Age of Empire extends far into history. It was a lot of people's first RTS. Yeah. I think a lot of people have that kind of... Uh, you know you, how you have that first MMO romance? I think a lot of people had that with Age of Empires just kind of overall. So I, I'm in your boat. I, I never really played Age of, Age of Empires over the years. Um, but, I mean, a new one's coming out. You know, that's cool. <laughs> like, I'll yeah. probably give it a try. Uh, but I don't have that three. connection that a lot of people have as well. Uh, I think Age of Empires 2 came out in 2007. I don't know about 3, though, Richard. I, yeah. I don't... I was always a StarCraft guy, so like I would look at Age of Empires and be like, <laughs> and look and turn the other way. <laughs> I don't. I just didn't. I don't know. I wasn't into it. I wasn't into it. Um, you would make the same face and sound as if a fly landed on your lip. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> uh, three was in two thousand five. When was two? Oh, oh, Age of Empires two was nineteen ninety nine. What came out in two thousand seven then, though? I thought that was a date that was being tossed around. See, this is how like interesting. Expansion? Maybe. So that's probably that's Maybe that probably was like the, the last hype. expansion or something. That was probably part of the hype, though. 12 years. No, since no new Age of Empires since 2007 or something. Yeah. That's how much I know about Age of Empires. Literally nothing. Didn't they have like a weird... There was like an Age of Empires weird game that came out a couple of years back that was like quest-based or something like that and free-to-play. I remember streaming that back when that came out and it was everyone hated it and moved on with life i think that was an age of empires game that was yeah that was aoe online okay they tried an aoe online that was bad that was a bad game wow that went right <laughs> under my radar yeah like it was licensed and everything yeah yeah people it wasn't good it wasn't good uh huh. so yeah that came out or that was announced rather rather and there was a, a small teaser for it and people fucking freaked out um, what else was there? There was a Jurassic World Evolution announcement trailer, which is like a city builder for Jurassic World, from what I can understand. Um, I think I can actually play this trailer. We'll just play any trailer from now on because YouTube just demonetizes everything, so it doesn't fucking matter anymore. <laughs> well, I'm just going to start showing... Well, actually, I can't show porn. We'll get banned from Twitch. Uh, here's the trailer for Jurassic Today World. Today on Drop Frames, Game of Thrones! <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We're going to show the entirety of Game of Thrones and not mention that it's this playing. This episode isn't even out yet. Get ready. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, this looks... I, I don't know. I don't know if I ever thought I needed this type of Jurassic Park game, but it might be fun. I don't... How do you not need this? Yeah, you're into this? This is your shit? I, I love city builders, man, especially if they have any difficulty to them. Yeah, yeah. And dinosaurs? Oh, I haven't actually go. seen this yet. Yeah, it's a full-on city builder for a Jurassic Park game. Oh, shit. What I really okay. want, and Jesse Cox has already 
tweeted something. I want Jesse Cox to cosplay as Richard Hammond and play this game. As, I think it's Richard Hammond is the old white guy with the beard and play this game at the same time because he will be perfect for it without a doubt. Um, so it's basically it's basically like the theme park game that came out recently, except it's Jurassic Park. Yeah. Same devs, if I'm not mistaken. Um, oh, is it? It might be the same devs. I'll, I'll look here in a second. I know the devs are have worked on other stuff. I just hope that no matter what you do, no matter how good your park is, it always fails and a T-Rex kills ends. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. That's exactly what I'm hoping. <laughs> yeah. That would be incredible. That would be incredible. Uh, who's making this? It is made by... Uh, Planet Coaster. Yeah, that was Planet the name. Coaster. Yeah. It's, the fr it's Frontier, the it's same front devs as Elite Planet Coaster. Thank oh, you, Barry. Fantastic. There you go. I thought so. I thought yeah. so. No. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So that means it'll probably be pretty good. It's actually. got a good pedigree. Planet Coaster was pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, John John Hammond is the guy. <laughs> well, who's Richard Hammond? Richard Hammond's from Top Gear. That's right. Yeah, nope, that's, that's right. right. That's <laughs> the one everyone hates from Top Gear, right? Yeah. 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 That's right. Okay. I've never watched Top Gear, but I I looked at his face and I went, I don't like this guy. <laughs> oh, you should watch Top Gear. It's good. Not I don't know the U.S. one is not that. Good. Watch the old Top Gear. It's much better. If you're bored, I think it's all on Netflix. <laughs> maybe. Um. Then there was some other stuff. There was this game called Bio Mutant, uh, which. The CG trailer looked cool, looked like a cool world, and then they had a gameplay trailer. Man, it looks rough. It it looks real fucking rough. Let me let me show the gameplay stuff. Is that the one with like the animal protagonist? Yes, this is the gameplay sizzle. Uh, it looks to be an open world yeah. game. Um, some of these scenes look cool. I I don't know it. There's parts of it that that looks really bad. That looks like an MMO from like 2010. <laughs> it looks really old. Um, and they don't show too much aside from like this hand kind of fighting, which looks kind of awkward and not super exciting. I don't know. Is that finger guns? Wait, did it just do finger yeah, it guns? It's doing finger, finger guns, guns. Got, yeah. I'm okay with that. Oh, man, finger guns. <laughs> the, the, the design and the world look kind of cool, but everything else just kind of looks meh. Maybe I'm hoping this is like really, really early on in development, and they're gonna sit there and, and iterate on this oh, and work on it. Oh, damage numbers. That's a good sign. Guns, <laughs> melee weapons. The dev on this. Uh, the dev on this is actually well known as well, and I'll look after we uh, we finish this gameplay trailer. I think they made the Just Cause series. Maybe I don't, I don't know. I would believe that looking at the world. Yeah, I'll have to look here in a sec. I'm uh, sold on that game. Really? That that did it for you? Yeah, I want to check it out. Okay. I mean, uh, let me make sure that that is the the publishers THQ Nordic Developers Experiment One Hundred and One. Is that what do they make? Yeah, just cause devs, just cause devs, according to chat. Okay, the former just cause devs. Cool, cool. Yeah, so they've got at least some pedigree in the. Uh, I've used that twice for some reason. Uh, in the open world. Word uh, of the day. Yeah, the word of the day is pedigree. Let's use it as many times as possible throughout the show. Um, trying to see if there's anything else. There was a bunch of Monster Hunter world, but we'll talk about that when we get to Dauntless conversation because I think we'll spend a good amount of time on that. I heard Elix was there. Elix. Did you see anything about Elix at all? Mm -mm. What is Elix? Elix is the new game that's coming out from Piranha Bytes, the makers of Gothic and Risen franchise. Hmm. It's uh, it's that it's the weird kind of sci-fi fantasy fusion in like a pretty thorough rpg world i really want to see more about it because piranha bites is is a is a i love the gothic series and i like risen but they're a total hit and miss company like sometimes they nail parts of their game and sometimes it's just like abysmal so i really want to know more about elix and i heard there was some stuff at gamescon but i haven't really seen anything yet yeah i'm yeah. looking at elix right now on steam uh, did it have a release date? Because it's out October 17th. I know that much. Yeah, it comes out soon. They won some award, but I think it was just like a vacuous, you know, like from a magazine or something, best in show kind of thing. But yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I don't if you want more info on it. I don't know. I, I did not see anything on that. Uh, Final Fantasy 15 PC version was shown, and it is. Did you watch that trailer? That that looks real fucking pretty. That is a pretty looks fucking Looks pretty game. gorgeous. <laughs> that is a gorgeous looking game. Um... Apparently, to play the game at uh, one of the big things that came out of the announcements, alongside it looking very gorgeous, was that it's 170 gigs if you want to run it at ultimate uh, on the PC. But to just run the game normally, it's not going to be 170 gigs or something. I think they came out and said, 
But 170 gigs is pretty insane for a normal download speed Jesus, in the world. Jesus, man. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Yeah. That would take me a week. Yeah, it would take a lot of people more than that. Um, is it download only? I don't know. I think it's going to launch on Steam. Also, I like that they chose the scene to show ass in 4K. I thought that was very, very much Final Fantasy. It's not. It's not 170. It's false info. Dev said the game won't be 170. Okay. Full 4K cheeks, right for right there for you, man. Just. Mm. Okay, it was a miscommunication. Never mind. It won't be 170. I bet you it's still gonna be like 60, 70 plus. There's no way they're gonna fit 4K video, and compress it that much. It's probably still gonna be a very large game. Um. But man, is it gonna be pretty? It is real pretty. I, I would probably actually like play this off stream. I don't know if it will warrant a stream playthrough, but like that hair. On that fucking animal looks rad. That face Damn. animation looks sick. Uh, and remember, you're seeing like a 720p shit feed code. There's a the video is 4K, so it looks phenomenal. I it think looks, I only watched it in 720 now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it looks Man, yeah. fucking insane. I'll probably um, pick that up again. Yeah, it's got all the DLC. It comes with every DLC already packed into it. So it's a buy one, you get everything free. Um, What's that price? That did they say? I think 60 bucks. Is that all? Oh, I, I would think it's sixty dollars. I don't know if it's on Steam. Oh, I think there is a has, Steam has page. Has the up. price of Final Fantasy Fifteen console fallen yet? I've seen it up for like fifty dollars or forty-five dollars, maybe on a couple sales. I, I think it's still normal price. Let's see okay. the Steam page real quick. Uh, yeah, fishing in four K. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let's see. Final Fantasy Fifteen Steam is hitting Those continue. Fish are Oh, it doesn't have price. Nice. It says available to early no 2018. Price. Early 2018, though, that's kind of... I mean, maybe there's nothing coming out, so I might actually play it on stream. It looks real pretty, though, without a doubt. And then they also announced that they're... They did the... The entire game is being ported to mobile. And Final Fantasy 15, like, mobile or something like that. Uh, and it looks real weird. I want to try to find that uh, trailer that they put out, because it is... It is bizarre looking. Um, here, Final Fantasy 15 Pocket Edition. Look at this fucking nonsense. This is real weird. It's like a chibi mobile game of Final Fantasy 15. Is this the one that I... Okay, I saw a parody of this on Reddit where it showed like the screenshot and it said that they're re-releasing 15 on the PS1. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what this and looks like. there was a like. good minute where I was like, no way. Like that would be so cool. Yeah, apparently it, this is. It looked like they made those characters in in Ark or or like <laughs> yeah, uh, um, uh, Dark and Light or whatever the right. Yeah, it, apparently it's like, the entire main I'm story get the of the big game. Big upper arms, real short forearms, and real thin. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. wait. This it's is the entire story. It's the entire main story in mobile form. From what I oh, remember be, reading. No, that's that's not gonna work. Yeah. Yeah, that's awkward. That also there, there's a couple bits in this trailer where the FPS just plummets to like single digits. Uh and some of the action stuff. Um yeah, it's exactly the same animations and everything. Like look at that FPS. That's not lag on my side. That is the literal FPS of the game. Um But hey, if you want Final Fantasy on mobile, here you go. I I guess they're trying to make as much money off this game as possible since it was in development hell for so long. Um, and good on them. Okay. This will probably sell a lot. I, I'd laugh if this does better than the actual main game did on uh, on actual consoles. We'll probably and see a lot more fun. Like fantasy. mobile, every mobile device. I don't know if they said which, if it's coming out iOS, Android. Uh, it might say that at the end here. Uh, what does it say? Autumn 2017... Download on the App Store. Get on Google Play. Yeah. So there you go. I guess it's on everything. Mm. Huh. Um, so that looks fucking bizarre. That's a thing I didn't know that was needed to exist at all. <laughs> that, hey, for someone like me, that might that might be the only way I play the game. Yeah. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah. I might I play it on an airplane. I think a lot of people be in that boat, actually. Yeah. Wait, I there was a... Final Fantasy in years. I missed... There's a new Overwatch animated short, and it's 10 minutes long. Did you guys it's know this? May, right? Yeah, it's got May. I didn't realize this was a thing. Well, fuck. Got to watch that later. Did anyone watch it? No. No. I didn't know this was a thing. Chad, is this is this Overwatch animated short good? Is it amazing? Boo! Uh, nope. Boo! Nope. 
No. Get out. Get out. Get out. Do you, Zeke, do you have a big wooden hook by any chance? <laughs> we can. Uh, well, I have, I have a big fucking hammer. <laughs> yeah, I'll get out of the way. No, that's Richard. Wrong no, way. Yes. Wrong way. Oh, ah. Richard. Look, yeah. You can't get me, Zeke. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Uh, watch it right now. It's 10 minutes. It's got feels. All right. We'll watch it. I'll watch that later. Uh, they put out like a Junker Town update or something. Yeah, Junkrat. Yeah, that was kind of not that. In, I don't know. It looked all right. It's. I think it's uh, unveiling in like a new map or something called Junker Town. Um, what else was there? Any other games? Uh, oh, go ahead. There's the you new can't hear any of this, right? Can you hear this? Yeah, we can hear that. Damn it. <laughs> I don't have them separated, I guess. Were you, were you gonna watch it right now? I was, but now I'm not. Okay. What were you saying that there's the new what, Co? There's a new Anno, Anno 1800, I think. It's, what is, what is Anno? Is that a, is that a builder game? What? Anno is like a, now I've never played it. I've definitely looked at it a few times. It's, Anno is a multi-generational. So there's a bunch of them at different generations. Some like in the future, some current day. And it's basically like a, a trading city management simulator. Um, from what I understand, it's it's very much, uh, oh, is, is that not right? Is it Anno? How do you say it? Anno? Oh, okay. I thought it was Anno. It's probably apparently one of those things where people Anno. say it both. But yeah, apparently it's really deep. Uh, it's got a, it's got a really a pretty big fan base, and um, I've really only heard good things about it. The biggest complaints that I heard, and the thing that kind of turned me off from the most recent one, which was one of the futuristic ones, is apparently it's much more of like a, uh, a kind of an on rails challenge thing. Like you're constantly just going after challenges. Huh. Um, but I've heard there's other modes too, and you know, it's every time I've looked at it, it's looked cool. It's it's almost a little daunting because it looks pretty complex, but it looks cool yeah. uh, mm -hmm. in terms of the graphics. That looks pretty cool. I'm just watching the trailer here. Why don't I know about this? Yeah, th this is one of those games, I guess, kind of like Age of Empires. Just kind of like, meh. I got StarCraft. I got Quake. We're good. Well, World of Warcraft maybe was probably out when this game was This one, I, I think, think more kind of SimCity. More uh, okay. Skylines. Yeah, okay. City Skylines kind of thing. Yeah. I. Cool. Um, there was also a new Assassin's Creed trailer that came out that didn't do anything for me. Uh, it was more like a story trailer. I don't know. There have been some favorable previews about the new Assassin's Creed come really? out. Really? Kind of mm-hmm. Okay. Makes me feel not so bad about getting that statue. Wait, you ended up buying that the $800 statue thing? E3 hype is a dangerous drug. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't you know you bought that. that you, don't, you don't think straight. Do they still have it? Can you still buy that? Assassin's Creed Origins <laughs> 800 it's eight hundred dollars, right? Yeah. Let's see if you could still buy it. I wonder if they've sold out of that shit. Uh, Co has the only one. <laughs> no, no. Tally bought one as well. On, oh. uh, to be fair, yeah, it's a damn nice statue. Probably one of the best one I've got so far. For How my... big is it? It's like big. two feet. I can go uh, get it. If you guys want me to? Oh, you've already gotten oh. the statue? Yeah, I got the whole thing. Oh shit! I didn't realize that. Yeah, go grab it. I want to see it. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't realize they sent that out. Uh, 28.7 inches big. I didn't realize it was there. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, it's big. And it's like super, super detailed. So, like, you can see kind of on the bow and stuff. Like, it is super... The whole thing is like that. Like, even the base is crazy detailed. So, wait. Like, all sorts of stuff. They, ship, really they shipped you that without the game? Nope, they shipped me an empty CD container. Really? Yeah. That's... How did they even ship that thing without breaking it? Oh, it was packed to hell. What? That little ankle is like so fragile looking. It's terrifying. It's uh, it breaks down into like five different pieces, and it came in like a crazy case. Oh, like, it comes uh, like with all sorts of foaming, and yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty wild. Like, yeah. Uh, apparently, honestly, it's, it's. I got like a a pretty big collector's edition set up. I ended up getting some more shelves and stuff, and uh, it's it's definitely like. It fits in well. It's a it's a damn nice piece. So. Apparently, tallies broke, according to chat. <laughs> I didn't know that. Uh, that can sucks. you still buy that? Yeah, they still have that available right now. Uh, that would be my number one fear: breaking it. Does so it much say, regret. You can if you want that. What Ko just showed right now, you can buy it. Eight hundred bucks. You'll earn up to eight hundred. Does it say how many are left? No, that's what I was looking for. I was curious how many they sold. I got like uh, it comes with a, a certificate of authenticity, and I got like a, a 
high 800s or something. So, hmm. Okay. <laughs> JP adding the cart? No. No, I'm good. Um, it says exclusively on Uplay, only 200 units sold in North America. I find that surprising that they're not sold out. Maybe they're going to make some. I don't know. That seems weird. I, I'm also surprised that you already have it, Co. I didn't think that. I actually we... <laughs> got it like three weeks ago, a really? month ago. Okay. It, it came oh. like shortly after I ordered it. It was clearly all like they had already had it set up by the time that probably went live. Huh. Okay. Uh, well, cool. I didn't realize that was a thing. I'm trying to see yeah. if there was any they other. They just released a Bioshock statue collection, too, that I, I recently picked up Yeah. for the 20th anniversary edition. Nice. It's not nearly as cool as that one, but yeah, it's pretty cool. It's like a big daddy and a little sister and stuff. So, hmm, a big like a big resin statue type deal. Uh, yeah, I think it's like a looks about under a foot, just under a foot. Cool, cool. Um, is there any other Gamescom news that was that you guys saw picked up that was interesting to you? Nope, crickets, nothing. I was actually looking through it just now. Yeah. Let me, yeah, let me take a look at the list real quick before we move on. What big game is coming out next week? Because World of Warcraft announced that they're throwing up patch 7.3 on Tuesday. What game is that going up against? Destiny PC, baby. Yeah. Really? That comes out in how many days, chat? Chat would know. It's the 28th, isn't it? Yeah. That would be Monday? No, you're wrong. Isn't Destiny two weeks? No, Destiny so it's console. The beta. Yeah. This is oh, the, the Destiny beta? 2 PC beta. They already did the console beta, and then they do the PC beta, and PC then it's console beta. release, and then it's PC okay. release. That seems odd, though, because, like, oh, Destiny... It's Monday. Yeah, Destiny and, and World of Warcraft are, like, the same. They're both Mario published. Ribbids and XCOM both come out on the 28th. Yeah. Usually, Blizzard will launch stuff like that to go up against something else that's happening, but everything that's coming out or will be out on that day except for XCOM and Rabbids. I don't know. Maybe they're Oh, XCOM. Yeah, that's true. The XCOM 2 DLC is probably pretty big. Yeah. Well, and and Mar Mario Mar Rabbids Mario is Tuesday. Mario too. Rabbids, yeah. Yeah. I think that'll be at least have a that's bigger That's so funny they're launch. coming out on the same day of all Do the You days. call it Ribbids? Rabbids, Ribbids, whatever they are. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I've never played any of them. It's the Mario game. That's what I'm saying. I, it's not it doesn't look challenging. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm worried about uh, with that game is that it's after playing a bunch of XCOM, it's going to be like yeah. a cakewalk. I really hope it's actually challenging. Um, I haven't read any previews or anything of it, though, so I don't know if people have said the difficulty's high. Yeah, dude, looking through a couple of these websites of all the games they showed, it, it's 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 E3. <laughs> yeah. Like every, every one is basically everything, all these things we saw at E3, except what we've already talked about. Yeah. Pretty much. So, yeah. There was some... Stay with me here. This is going to be a tough one to keep you guys on board. There was some Call of Duty news that came out. <laughs> and we all know how big of a fan we all are of Call of Duty. Um, but they showed something that's kind of cool with the... It's called the Headquarters Reveal trailer. So, this is actually what it looks like in between games now. You load into this, like, in-game lobby... Where there's like different, from what I understood, this video did a really poor job of understanding what the fuck was happening. But it's like a dynamic hub that you can walk around in and they have like gun ranges and there's challenges and stuff like that. I think that's really cool that you don't have to fucking just stare at a screen that has all the names on the right side and then a countdown and you vote on the map or whatever. There's like an actual lobby where you can walk around and, and shoot things in while waiting for the so, game to start. So what you're saying is, there's just going to be a big, really cool, detailed place where you can hear people just shout racial epithets like yes. over, over again. Yeah, and so then now you can actually shoot them. <laughs> oh, you can shoot them and make them die? I, uh, maybe. Up? I don't know. I don't know if you can if there's friendly fire. Now, that would be rev a fucking lucianary. <laughs> Someone's just spouting off, hey, shut the fuck up. Do people yeah. actually enjoy this? Like, I mean, personally in PUBG, I hate the lobby. I wish it would just not take me in there and I didn't have to deal with shooting and running around in circles. And same goes with H1. Like, right. Because clearly that's what they're mocking. And I just, I, do people actually have fun in that lobby? I think the memers do. You think so? Yeah. I, I think people younger than us probably do. <laughs> I guess that's well, true. Also, something really weird, though, is COD is not like 
H1Z1 or Battlegrounds where they queue up a whole bunch of people at once right. and then mm. they all go in and then more importantly, no one can hot drop into the game. In COD, if you join multiplayer, most of the time you just like join a game that's about to get set up or you go into an active game. So it's kind of like when, when exactly are they saying that players are going to use that? Is it when they're, is it when they're, like, it's I, when, I it's when you're queuing for the match is what I was told. So like when you're, so you queue up to find a multiplayer game and then there's going to be enough time between actually finding a game to like go out and do these challenges and shoot I, stuff. And I think it's like a lobby that will be present and then you can queue up from there. And while you're still queued, you can run around and do things the way that I understood it. When I saw that trailer, I had zero fucking idea what I was looking at. I thought I was like looking at the game hmm. or I, okay. I don't know. I was super confused. Uh, the trailer did kind of a poor job explaining to me what the fuck I was seeing. I was just under the assumption. I'm not a COD player, but I was under the assumption that in COD, it's like it's there's not a lot of time between gameplay. And that's one of the reasons actually people liked it. So it just seemed kind of weird to like fully develop yeah. this, this area for the time that is really kind of small. And yeah. all the other. I don't know. I don't know. Hmm. Wouldn't it be weird if Call of Duty made a PUBG style game? If they just said fuck it and we're gonna I'm surprised they haven't already. Yeah. Yeah, me too. That Imagine they're, they're probably developing one. Apparently they're saying it's more of a social hangout and less of a lobby. Like a social hub okay. is what they're like listing Destiny it then. as. Huh. Yeah, like Destiny has. Hmm. That's kinda cool, I guess, to add that stuff in. <laughs> I, I do think what Zeke was saying where you're just gonna hear a bunch of racial slurs and whatnot yeah. being thrown about. Depending on how many people can actually load into one. Um, that clip made it look like there was a lot of boys in there. Yeah. 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 Um, but it also it, looked like there were emotes and stuff like that, which was kind of interesting because there were people yeah. cheering for those that were doing the. Yeah. The, 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 so it's like, <laughs> how many lewd combinations of normal emotes can we come up with? <laughs> <laughs> if I'm a huge Call of Duty fanboy, though, I think that would be pretty fucking cool to be like, hey, I can jump into an actual like thing where I can move around and hang out with people. That's not just a screen that has microphone flares when people talk and like the name and, and rank of the people that I'm about to play with. Like, I would think that's pretty cool. I think that's a fun step forward. Um, I think in concept, it's great. But yeah. The, the racism will probably conquer it. You're probably right. You're probably right. Um, I guess we'll have to see when that comes out. That, uh, that beta comes out this week, actually, um, for the, Whatever they're calling that, what is it? Call Call of Duty World War Two? I don't know which what's the actual what the actual full name is. I, I might check it out just to see if it's still Call of Duty, but it probably still is. So it'll be, last about an hour or two. <laughs> then I'll move on. Um, I don't think there was anything else that was super crazy out of there. Uh, Zeke, did you stumble upon anything? Or are you watching the the May stuff? No, no, no. I'm I'm looking through the 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 releases and and the announcements and whatnot for for gamescom uh the vibe went down 200 bucks i guess saw that yeah yeah that the good is... prices also, need to keep going down fallout 4 is yeah. restricted to the vibe exclusive that, which is really interesting because skyrim isn't <laughs> yeah so it's just like what are you guys doing exactly <laughs> yeah Probably. So yeah, that's a little weird. Sony probably took uh, a chance and, and risk it because isn't Skyrim on PlayStation VR? I believe it is. Okay, they Let probably took a chance with Skyrim over Fallout, which I would think is probably the one that people are more into playing. Yes, it is. I don't know that that's they're kind of the same audience a little bit. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, also, that got a launch date, right? Fall, Fallout 4 VR got a launch date in like December, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah I think so. Yeah. I don't I don't know if that was known already. Um Oops. Oh, here's an it. Here. Xfinity customers are now getting access to the Call of Duty World War II beta without pre-order. So if you're on Xfinity, the ISP, you get access to Call of Duty World War II beta. I get shit internet and bad games? Great. <laughs> 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 oh, God, that's pretty Rude. good. Rude. That's pretty good. Um, there's a Need for Speed trailer that came out. It looks kind of meh. looks kind of meh. Uh, I think that's about it. Gamescom always uh, has less can... interesting stuff to me. You can play Prey for free for a little bit, and then your progress will carry over. Yeah, saw that. Yeah. Um, I thought Prey was and, a great uh, 
I enjoyed someone it a lot. In, someone in chat pointed out that it looks like um, Fallout 4 VR is coming out for the Vive first, and then they're going to be extending it out. So that's okay. good, at least. Cool. So it's an exclusive window, then? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sounds like it. And I played that. I played the Fallout VR, man. Oh, you and, did? Uh, oh, yeah, that's I right. That's right. You did. Yeah. I played at E3. It was rough, and right? I, it's it's just it's not rough. I mean, it's fine. It's the uh, the graphics aren't really super updated or anything. It's cool to to be inside the world, but for a game that's hundreds and hundreds of hours, <laughs> man, it's for VR. That I don't know if that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I was mean, talking about that on stream today, actually. Like, I'm I'm gonna try Fallout 4 VR, but. I'm almost worried to like it too much, especially because you can't switch back and forth between VR and normal. So How do it's they like handle base... movement? What's you up? Know? How do they oh, handle warping. movement in that one? It's is mostly it warping? warping. There is, there is. I think it's a combination of warping and also you can do like some a little bit of movement, but I don't think yeah. there's any walking movement. I think it's like you push a left, you know, forward, back, left, and right kind of thing on the controller. Yeah, but... you, you look and then you press forward, and that's that's where I was. That's where I walked. Or you can look at a place and and kind of teleport, especially during the. Um, the uh, is it what is it, AP? No, the um, whatever oh, the, the, the slow down stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I yeah. don't know what that's called. You I'm like not a stop person. time, and you can like shoot an area if it's if it's like a big enemy. You yeah. can stop time, like shoot an area, teleport, shoot his leg, teleport, shoot the you know back or whatever. And then when you get like the kill shot, you can like teleport up and watch like the head explode in front of you. It's pretty. That's I mean that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's cool for sure. For sure. I don't think I could do warping. Vats, for... thank you, Vats. Whoops. For four to six hours, kind of deal. Like, you're gonna try to do a whole cast of it? Well, you break yours up, Co. Well, like for for instance, Rev- Resident Evil Seven is still the best VR game I've ever played, and it was amazing. But even and I enjoyed every minute of it. Don't get me wrong. But at the end of each of the days that I played it, and I played it for like six to nine hours, three days in a row. Um, when you're done with a VR thing, like you're tired. Like yeah. it, there's there's parts of your brain that work more when you're in VR, or it, that that doesn't that that's not right. Um, there, it just, it, it exhausts you more than normal. You feel different after a long VR cast than you do a long normal cast. You're just more tired. Your head really isn't in the same place. It's kind of weird. And I can't imagine doing that. Like Zeke said, like 10 plus casts, a seven, 80 plus hour. I don't know, man. By the end of the third day, even though I res- loved Resident Evil 7, I was, I was, done. Done. Yeah, like, I, I, was I was that. ready to play non VR. I was good. So, um, yeah, it's a little, it's a little, little weird. I might jump into that, though. I mean, I feel like that's going to come out at a time where pretty much everything has come out already. So it's going to be kind of a, a catch-up time on Twitch. And it might be kind of a fun thing just to jump into and see how it is for a day or two. I don't think I'd do a full playthrough, though. That seems like it'd be a... It, Fallout 4 is, what, a 40-plus hour game if you mainline the story? Co, how long does it take? I spent 150 hours in it. You didn't mainline the story, though. You did yeah. everything. <laughs> if you main the story, it's like 20 to 30. You can get through it yeah. pretty quick. Okay. Even less, really. Yeah. I would assume in VR though. Thirty for a main story quest, a <laughs> child's play. <laughs> I think if you play that game in VR though, it's gonna take substantially longer, just because you're gonna walk into a room and be like, "I want to touch this teacup, <laughs> pick up the teacup." Also, there's like looking, thinking about the game. There's so many situations when warping is just gonna be so awkward and weird. I'm I'm very curious to see how they're gonna handle that. Cause, yeah, yeah. I don't, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. Um, there's some other stuff. Player Unknown's Battlegrounds announced a expanded partnership with Microsoft, and I'm trying to figure out what the fuck that actually means because I don't know what that <laughs> means. I'm reading through this press announcement now. Uh, By partnering with Microsoft, our team believes that we'll be able to accelerate console development while maintaining quality across all platforms. We give access to vast blah blah blah. We're excited to continue and further strengthen our partnership with Microsoft, and are super excited. What the fuck does that mean? They literally don't say a single thing what that means. Maybe they just got more money for development on console. Just some, just some. I'm, I'm sure it has something to do with the Xbox ex- exclusive, right? Yeah, it is coming out for the Xbox soon. So. Yeah, I'm reading through this announcement. There's like nothing. I don't know. Probably has something to do with that. Yeah, I know that the. Uh, did anyone pre-order a uh, an Xbox One X? Apparently the pre-orders are doing better than anticipated, according to someone. Oh, so tweeted sixteen that up. people bought them. Yeah, I'm really curious what what was. <laughs> it, Roasted. I want to know like what was expected, and I want to know how many people actually pre-ordered <laughs> that. Uh, how much some, was it again? Oh God, you're asking the five hundred. 
still cheaper than Coast Statue. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> probably probably would probably do the same thing though. Just sit on his shelf and never be used. <laughs> just it's like true. That's true. About as useful. <laughs> <Yeah>. Zing. <laughs> <laughs> So I'll you, get more use playing games on my statue. If you want a cheaper paperweight, <laughs> check out the Microsoft Xbox One X. That's no, I got to admit, like I'm for for once, I'm like, oh, is that it? Is that the Xbox One X right there? No, that's some box. Oh, what that's his that? Xbox. <laughs> oh, that's his Xbox. Okay, gotcha. But no, like I'm waiting. I I I I want a singular reason to pick up an xbox one s before i get one and i've been looking Man, they, for a singular reason to get one i have not yet seen one there was yeah. a Brand new in the box but i want one i want to i want to I, I want a reason to get one you selling that zeke am i selling it yeah why do you want it i'll get it for my little brother <laughs> <laughs> there was a tweet that was so weird god damn i wish i could find it it was like a it was like an Xbox One tweet of the games coming out the holiday season. And it was like, the only place to play these games. And it was like, Cuphead, PUBG, Forza 7, and Age of Empires 2. And that was like their big lineup. And I was just like, what the, what the fuck? Like, what? <laughs> why? Why? <laughs> just get a PC. Just fucking buy a PC and you can do all those things already. I don't know. It was real weird. I wish I could find whoever tweeted that out from, from Xbox, but it was... By the way, a oh, lot of is, people in chat are right. And what Z, or what uh, JP is saying is right. That, of course, like consoles aren't marketed to us. We have high-end PCs and stuff like that. But just as a quick, for example, like the PS4 Pro sizably made VR better. And they showed comparisons all the time of how the PS4 Pro will make your game look better with side-by-sides. We just haven't seen anything like that from, from Microsoft. It's like they're too concerned to cannibalize their current audience or offend the current owners. They, they don't want to push it enough yeah. to kind of be like, this is why you need an Xbox One S. They're just kind of like, oh, it's here if you want it, but it's fine if you have another Xbox. That's okay, too. You know, it's like they don't, they don't want to. So I, I, I almost want them to be more aggressive with it. Like, I, I want them to be like, here's why you need one. Right. And, and I, they just aren't doing that. So. Yeah, I don't need one. <laughs> uh, here, here's that's the, all I meant by. Here's a tweet I was actually referring to. The game was so obscure that I couldn't even fucking remember the name. Super Lucky's Tale, which is the Vive game that was yeah. the VR platformer, is being ported to the Xbox, and that's the game that they're touting for the holiday season from Aaron Greenberg. So the top games you can play on Xbox One uh, from this holiday and more this spring: Forza Seven, Cuphead, PUBG Battlegrounds, and Super Lucky's Tale. It's rough. That's a rough it's got to be marketed at just that young generation, man. I don't know any adults that are going to put any value in that. It's someone that like purchased the, and this isn't a PlayStation versus Xbox thing. It's someone who purchased the PlayStation 4 Pro the second it went on sale on Amazon. I would not buy a Xbox One X, and I have not pre-ordered it whatsoever. And pre-orders have been up for quite a long time, almost a couple days. Uh, and that's just... Because I think the PS4 Pro is kind of a mistake for me to purchase, even as a streamer. It just doesn't get that much use. And I kind of feel the exact same way, even more so about the Xbox One X. So, I don't know. One thing I did pre-order, though, was that goddamn SNES Classic. <laughs> I was too late. <laughs> Were you? I tried yeah. multiple times. Multiple I, Why? I tried multiple Why? times. I don't get it. Why is everyone so set on a SNES Classic? Because it's know. awesome. It's, I have one sitting right here. You want me to grab mine? I've got he mine in, his... in my uh, living or my bedroom, actually plugged up for Mario. Are you, are you actually offering to send me one? Because no, no, he's talking about his <laughs> old. He's talking about his old SNES. Uh, my regular SNES is right there. Yeah, like, I don't know. I wish I had a regular SNES still. They're not that, that much that though. You of could, cartridges. You could, that's the how many games is it that you get with it? I don't know. Twenty something. That's the. Ask money. me anything about this thing that I was trying like, frantically it's to buy. Damn, that you're trying frantically to buy. Yeah, I think Star Fox too. Yeah, that's true. It's got Star Fox too. Star Fox I think it really is a, a result of. Uh, it's kind of the result of like Black Friday, right? Where everyone's sitting outside the store and they're like, "Are oh, you going now?" And everyone fucking runs in. It's the same exact thing, except for video game nerds trying to get this shit because it's quote rare and limited because of Nintendo and the people selling it have decided to make it rare and limited, and that's why everyone fucking freaks out about it. 
I got my Nintendo one. I want to get my SNES one, and that covers like a good three years of my son's gaming career. Like between three and six, boom, covered. Yeah, that makes sense. Yep. Um, I never got the classic one, the the NES classic. I didn't end up getting that. Um, but the the super, I I want it for Final Fantasy three. I want it for Donkey Kong Country, Star Fox, Earthbound, Secret of Mana, Super Mario RPG. Super Mario World, does, Super Mario Kart, Super Metroid, F Zero, Mega Man X, like, <laughs> yeah, like Earthbound is still what an over a hundred dollar cart, if I'm not mistaken. It's real expensive, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Legend of Seven Stars is up there too. Yeah, like all those yeah. games, all these games right here that come with it. Every single one of these games was like a fucking pretty big deal for me when I was younger, and I think it's alongside the idea of like the black friday feel i think it's also just nostalgia fueled for this entire thing 100 um, percent. there's games on there i've never beaten there's a couple games on there i've never played like yeah i'm i'm looking forward to it man i'm planning on streaming some of those yeah yeah so we'll see i i don't know i think i got one i got one through amazon i ordered there was a amazon link that everyone was like that's not real that's a fake one and i just took a chance and ordered it then ended up being the real one and so I, I haven't gotten a cancellation of your order yet. You wanted it so bad you took a chance on a fake link? I mean, it's like, well, not a fake link, but like a fake <laughs> posting. Oh, okay. Yeah. It wasn't a, quote, fake posting. It was a posting that didn't have, like, box art or uh, it wasn't officially sold by Nintendo. It was sold by, like, a third-party re re retailer. There we go. For some reason, I couldn't say that word. Uh, that was like also supported by Amazon at the same time. So I was like, ah, we don't know if we want to buy that. And I bought into it and it worked out. Uh, but yeah, people were fucking losing their minds over this shit. And the thing that sucks too is they popped up on eBay like a day later, maybe even hours later for four or five times the price. Always. Yeah. And there's like multiple ones from, from, di from the same seller, which sucks. I'm hoping they'll do the same thing with the NES. They made a whole bunch more later. So. Did they really? Okay. That's I, I mean... Can you still? You can get the NES ones now, can't you? I don't think you can. I think they're really? done making them. I think they they stopped production on them. That's why everyone oh. went fucking crazy. Oh, see, when I got when I got my NES one, I was just thinking about it one day and went to Amazon and bought it. Like I it I, it wasn't I wasn't waiting for it. I didn't even have the the notifications turned on. I just hmm. loaded up Amazon and bought one. Hmm. So. Yeah, hmm. I don't think you can. So yeah, people are saying in chat that they they apparently straight up stopped. Interesting. Yeah. I still see huh. some for sale though, and not ridiculously overpriced, like oh, Amazon really? and stuff. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're a little high. They're called just they're classics, high. right? Yeah. NAS Classic, yeah. Production's over though. Those are probably mostly hmm. resellers. Yeah. Let's see. Yeah, I'm looking at the Amazon postings now. Yeah, two forty five ninety eight from. Would you? What was it new? Like seventy bucks, was that all it was? I think yeah, it wasn't much. So that's marked up huge. Oh yeah, that's two or three times the price. Um, so the the second thing that comes up on on NES Classic for me, mm -hmm. wait a minute, am I just, I should do all new. Perfect. Wow, they right. were dirt cheap. Oh, never mind. Oh, they're sixty. What are you saying, Zeke? Never mind. Never mind. Okay. I was I was in. I didn't do all departments. I was looking computers. But the, the the second thing that popped up was a uh, a Raspberry Pi case, like Nintendo Classic Raspberry Pi case. Oh, it does the sa It probably does it better than what, the, <laughs> what Nintendo put out. But there's the like the idea of owning something that Nintendo put out is cooler. It's it's fucking mm -hmm. stupid. The entire thing is stupid as fuck. Uh, but Nintendo's raking in the money on them for sure. Uh, and I think that's kind of it. I, there might have been one more thing that I wanted to bring up, but I can't remember what it was. So I think we should just move on. And talk about Ko's new addiction and Path of Exile. How's Path of Exile? I quit. Cold turkey. I fucking stepped out. I'm loving it. I I just got to... I finished my first T10 map today on my nice. little Kobo build. And uh, tried as Tiri, as Reedy, whatever. And uh, promptly got my ass handed to me by not understanding that they can reflect, even though it doesn't say it, on their little thingy there. And uh, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun, dude. I'm having a lot of fun. Um, I've been, I actually streamed it today. I've been playing it a lot off stream. I have now 147 hours in it. Yep. And um, it's a great way to pass the time when there's not a lot of other games to play. It's You're a right. fantastic off stream game. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, I just, I'm just loving it. Yeah. I stopped. Uh, so you said tier 10 maps? 
I'm on tier 10 maps right now. Okay. Yeah. I hit tier 13. Uh, I talked a little bit about this last week. I hit tier 13 maps and it got to the point where the grind became like fractions of upgrades, like the smallest percentages of upgrades and damage and all that stuff uh, is what was needed. And the grind became longer in the amount of time to get set upgrade. And that's where I was just like, I can either make a new character or I can continue this grind or I can stop. And Did you hit a wall? No, I could still continue killing like yes and no. Tier 13 like I think tier 17 is quote shaper. That's like the last big big bad. Um and guardians are before that. I definitely didn't have the gear to do that, but I probably could have pushed forward with tier 13 maps and farm those somewhat easy. Um it just wouldn't have been the same like power hungriness or, or powerful feeling where you just walk into a map and fucking slaughter everything in seconds and get out. Uh, and so it kind of lost its, its thing there for me. I think honestly, the fun part about the game was probably the best part about the game for me was leveling. And then that initial bump, when you finish the leveling and jump into maps and you get like a huge boost in gear really quickly, right after that huge boost in gear stops, that's where I kind of started to lose interest. Um, that's not to say I don't think the game's good or anything. I think the game's fucking, I think it's for my interest, the best free to play game out there right now. Uh, without a doubt, I just didn't, that grind wasn't something that I was looking for after I'd already played like a hundred hours in a week. I kind of probably, I probably burnt myself out is what happened <laughs> ultimately. Um, but the game's super fucking fun. The game's awesome. Uh, I, we talked about it at length already. Uh, and I think we kind of echo what, what each one says. Um, are you still making your own build code? Did you start? Yep. To, okay. Yep. I'm still on my own build. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's like a, it's a ranger build. Still haven't looked at any guides for it. And, uh, I think that's honestly one of the reasons that I'm, I'm still really enjoying it as much as I am because not only do I not have a build, so I'm not following a guide or anything, but it also makes it so, so many different potential things are upgrades because I'm not going any particular direction. Right. So anytime I get something that's really good, I may just find a way to incorporate it into my gear. Or if I find some new item that changes the way my character plays, I'll just be like, okay, well, I'll respect a few points and now we're doing this. And right. you know, it's like, so it, it's, it's made it a lot more free form, but like today for the first time, you know, I, I spent actually some time respecking and I respect my, the first part of my tree to give life. I got 4,100 hit points. Finally, I got over 4k. And, uh, you know, little stuff like that makes it a lot of fun to kind of puzzle solve, um, you know, how I'm going to get to those different places and, and fine tune the build and things like that. But, yeah, it's 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 definitely kept me engaged throughout the process. And I'm I like I said, I got trashed by that boss today. And it's yeah. the first boss. I can't wait to get stronger, and go back and beat her. So yeah. and, and the thing that you're saying about the grind that that actually gets that makes me excited. Yeah, <laughs> I love grinding. I so, think for yeah, a lot of people it does as well. Obviously, that's why they continue this is, to play. It. This is literally filling my MMO itch. Yeah. Like I was playing EverQuest, <laughs> and then I kind of, I, I'm still playing EQ, but it's just like that raiding portion, kind of like what you're doing with Final Fantasy uh, 14, where it's just like now I just kind of get onto raid and stuff. Yeah. And um, so I kind of lost that that grindy thing that I had originally gone to EQ for, and now PoE is filling that pretty nicely. So that's been good. It's been good. Yeah. Um, I think also what happened. And I'm curious to see if this ever happens to you. The first character I had was kind of like yours, where I it it was a build, but it wasn't like good. It wasn't necessarily a popular or really well balanced build. Then I made a good character, and it was fucking like night and day difference in terms of how good the character actually was. So I'm curious if you ever restart and decide to like follow a guide, an established build, or something like that. If you'll get the renewed sense that I had where you're just like, holy shit, I was a fucking idiot. Like, this is so much better on every conceivable possible level. Yeah, the thing is, though, <laughs> I, I pretty much already know that's going to be the case. Yeah. So uh, one one big thing I did is that's very different from most PoE players is I did a lot of grinding off stream. And since I was streaming the entire adventure, I didn't want to progress off stream. So what I did is whenever I wanted to play for a couple hours every night, I would just redo the same levels over and over. So that put my level way ahead of the act. So here I am as a ranger, which is like one of the more 
uh, I don't want to say difficult, one of the least powerful bases right now in right. this current expansion. In fact, like Ziggy said, he doesn't recommend people start with it. Here I am on the Ranger, finishing Act 10 with 15 deaths. So it's like, which is great. I mean, like I had a great time, you know, and, and it was my first time ever playing. But the only reason that I was able to do that was because I did all this grinding. Yeah. So when I go back and play another character, what I think will be most surprising to me is when I retain that same amount of power and don't do all that extra grinding. Because uh, I'm sure that if I had done that on like an actual build, that it would have, the, the, the power just would have been insane. Yeah. But since I was doing my own thing, it just kind of brought me up to like a normal level. That makes sense. That makes sense. Well, cool. I, ho I hope we uh, continue to hear stories of, of you. N none of the like streamers, the variety streamers that jumped in, into this have gotten to, I think at Ziri is probably where most people got. I don't know if Dan killed Guardians. I don't want to say what that is because I don't know if you're trying to keep that secret to I, yourself. Yeah, if it yeah. could. <laughs> yeah, I, I, don't, I don't actually know what they are except that there's a thing called Guardians. Um, and I don't think Dan killed those. I think Dan was the furthest along. Um, and then Shaper is just like, just real far away from me just speaking of which uh did did dan stop playing or did he just did he did he do the same as you or he was kind of like done or is he just doing other stuff i'm not sure i think dan was playing and i know he had those uh he had some health issues last night so i don't know if he's going to continue playing because a lot of that was probably from just you know 12 plus hour streams and path of exile resting on his elbow yeah. uh <laughs> they caused a lot of the complications um but yeah chat chat's saying he's not done so there you go Ah, good. Good. Yeah. Uh, I, I've been lurking a lot in his POE streams lately. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing that with this game. If you play this game, you want to watch other people play because you get not only while you're playing, you get the satisfaction and the drippage of things dropping in your game. You get the drippage of excitement from things dropping in their game as well as you're watching them. So it's like double the adrenaline shot on two fronts, and you're just like, ah. Oh. Keep dropping Richard? the items. <laughs> are what? you uh, are you laughing at drippage? I'm laughing hard at drippage. Drippage is a great word. <laughs> yeah. I was like, drippage is a great oh, word. Oh, I know what he's giggling about because I was like, all I hear is drippage. And drippage he's doing like best. drippage hand. Yeah, you got the drippage hands exactly. <laughs> drippage it all, drippage it all over. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, thankfully uh, there's there's someone as low class as I mm. to laugh at these things. No, I said it and giggled in my head. I was like, I'm just going with what it. Let's have? just push it out there. If I giggle, they're going to giggle, so let's just keep going. Push what the, the fuck out. is go What the hell just happened to Twitch? Past broadcast <laughs> is completely different looking. Come and show your past broadcast page. This is what I'm seeing. <laughs> the videos are ginormous. Whoa. They just pushed it up. shrinking the window? Uh... That is shrink. That is normal size of Twitch. That is not blown up. I don't know what the fuck's happening. Twitch is Dude, Twitch changes so fast these days. <laughs> Apparently I, the follow page is I never too. know if it's not loading right or if it's a rejig or if it's like a new feature. I. Oh, the follow page looks like that too, JP. It's just, I just giant hit, videos. I just hit F5 and it says no videos found on Ko's past broadcast. <laughs> What in the actual fuck, Twitch? It's going crazy. Oh, yeah. Live channels. Oh, yeah. we're investigating reports of directory images appearing to be oversized. Thanks for the reports. That's from Twitch support uh, five minutes ago. Oh, God. This is going to. Okay. Uh, Good luck. Yeah, that's going to. Eh, that's all right. <laughs> so. It gets a big website. Things are going to break. Eh, time that's, to fine. Time. that's fine. Uh, I'm just going to keep F5. Zeke, talk to. I, we, Need to join you in the conversation. Talk to me about Observer. You talked a little bit about it last week. Did, did you yeah, finish it? I did. Was it worth it? Was it good? Uh, yes. I would say, is it worth it? Yes. Okay. Um, there are definitely some things that I had had some. I took some issue with. I started taking issue with. Uh, I love a good head trip. I love. I love being mentally fucked with a little bit. However, there is a line. Where it's just like, okay, you, like, okay, if you've ever done psychedelic drugs, which I never have yeah. or would ever do, mm -hmm. um, but I've heard tale that there are times when you're like, I just, I just want this to be over. I just want it to be over. And Observer had some of that for sure, where it was just like you jacked in and you're like, mm, okay, get it. Okay. We're still going into the, okay. Okay. You look at like, I think I, I don't know if I said it here or my stream or whatever but you look at fireworks and you're like oh fireworks that's awesome 
But two hours of fireworks, you're like, okay, I get fireworks now. I'm, I'm, I, I'm right there. Got it. That's kind of observer suffers from that a little bit. A little okay. bit of, of overzealous, you know, mind fuckery, I guess. Okay. Um, but, I mean, you get through it. It's actually, it's, it's, a, it's a cool world. It's a little bit more claustrophobic than I would have liked. Meaning you, there's not a lot of, like, outside exploration. Uh, you, go, you get in the, the trippy-ass world, and it sort of opens up a little bit. But the whole thing takes place in a very kind of confined area. Um, the graphics are awesome. The sound design is fucking cool. Um, the, the voice acting is really good. Uh, I would say... 95% of the voice acting is spot on and, and really like, you know, what you want. Like Rucker Hauer is amazing. He has that, that old actor y voice that just, you know, kills it. But uh, I did play through it and I got to the end. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say anything about the end. But I mean, <laughs> would it, okay. I don't know if it would be spoiling. I don't think it Co would be. it, so he might help you out. Kind of expect it. But there's uh, more than one ending. I'll just say that. Okay. More than one ending, and I've seen them, and this leave you wanting hmm. a little bit. Did you and have you and Co talked? Did you guys get the same ending? We got. We both saw both endings. Okay. 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 So I guess we're we're saying there's two. I mean that's fine. <laughs> uh, there's two endings. Sure. Would you, Maybe there's more. There could very agree, easily be more. There could be more. Play to see the other ending, or did you both just look it up? No, I played. I I went back. You went back and saw. Okay. Okay. So I, I can kind of piece together what happens then, and somewhat. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'd show footage. Of, by the I way, mean, you're I just like thoughts. one of them. You're like, oh, whoa, whoa. And the other one, you're like. Mm, mm. <laughs> what, does that does that help you out? Yeah, okay, sure. If people are looking for those two uh, feelings at the end of the game, I think it might. Yeah. Co, yeah. what'd you think of? But it's, uh, it's a it's a cool experience. I I well, would. How much is it again? I'll look it up 30? real quick. I got it right here. It's thirty bucks. Thirty, yeah. Thirty bucks, and I spent in in Zeke playtime nine hours, and how I bet Co finished it with in five and change. Six and change. Six and change. Okay. Yeah. Close. Did you like Maybe it, Co? So. Okay. Um, like Zeke said, you know, if you haven't done psychedelics, it can be definitely a little intense and, you know, a little bit weird. However, it was great for me. I, I thought it was fantastic. <laughs> um, I loved Observer. I loved it beginning to end. I am a cyberpunk person. And what's crazy is as I'm playing through this game, I could not keep getting these little, like, tinges of Neuromancer, which is one of my favorite books by a guy named William Gibson. Um, there are so many awesome things to see in that game if you are a sci-fi or cyberpunk fan. I love the story. I love the pacing. I love the characters. Um, the times when it got really intense and trippy were actually some of my favorite parts in it because if, if, you, if you've read this book, like one big thing about being in this like sci-fi universe is a lot of times you don't have control of what's coming at you. So it's, it's, it's all about just being able to kind of ride the wave and stuff like that. And you definitely get that vibe when you're playing through Observer where it's just like, okay, just let everything happen. Just keep falling. <laughs> just, just, keep, just try to keep your eye on the prize. And uh, yeah, I, I, had a, I had a great time with it. I really enjoyed it. Um, it gets gory at times. It gets kind of – there's definitely horror aspects there are times in this game where you will get completely freaked out about what's going on. Uh, there are times where the game makes you feel very uncomfortable, especially in, like in your person. Um, it, it really runs the gambit. And the thing that the, the thing, the kind of final note that I'll put with this game is I feel the same way about this game as I do Hellblade, where the actual game and gameplay is a little bit lackluster. The actual gameplay of this game is walking around and talking to doors or walking around and looking at stuff or doing a very rudimentary Witcher, Spider-Man style sense kind of game. And that's it. And there's also some rudimentary, 
mechanics later on that are similar to like alien isolation or you know avoid the monster kind of stuff um and also i gotta say i apparently got lucky with those that that scene apparently has chased some people away from the game in terms of just being annoying and frustrating like there's a couple there's a couple and zeke you probably know what i'm talking about there's a yeah. couple areas of the game that where the, the game play is is lackluster it's just not great yeah but as you kind of just like <laughs> hellblade i kind of feel the same way about that it's an experience like this is a game where when you're done with it like i was just like that was that was awesome. You know, you just like let out a deep breath and you're and you kind of assess everything you've just been through. And uh, it, it basically felt like a sci fi amnesia with a lot more kind of emphasis on the the, the crazy cyberpunk angle. And uh, yeah, I loved it. I thought it was great. I thought it was great. Cool. Yeah. Was it cricket? I'd, rec I'd, I'd recommend it. It's, you know, five bucks an hour if you if you or a little bit more than five bucks an hour if you play it like a normal person. Um, <laughs> we still love uh, you. <laughs> no, I know. I just I just take forever to do things. Um, but I I mean obviously I got a little more more dollar value out of it. Um, don't yeah do, do not do not even attempt it if you have aversions to flap it, uh, flashing lights. Oh, I thought oh you God, said, no. I thought you said flappage, and I'm like. All right. To flapping, to flapping things. <laughs> if you are versus a flappage or drippage, <laughs> then you may want to avoid this game. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, well, I guess I'm out. <laughs> yeah. No, those no, those aversions run deep in my pedigree. Yeah. You will definitely exactly. like. It'll we fuck you up if you have again. like epilepsy or anything like that. It's bad, real bad for that. Yeah. What was the See, other? Like, like this part here in the game is a very interesting like like that kind of stuff is what really broke the game for me and that all there's there's entire side areas to the game there's whole parts of the apartment building you don't have to go to that have their own little side stories and little kind of like easter eggs and stuff you can mm -hmm. completely avoid them if you want to and just do the main story so we actually explored around and went into all the rooms and stuff and there's some very cool things there's like little amnesia easter eggs in there and uh and layers or excuse me layers of fear easter eggs this is the layer of fear step yeah and yeah. um and all sorts of little stuff like that it's it's pretty cool it's pretty cool, cool. cool. yeah um i don't think vods are but i will say it, it's so. it's i think it's a would you say it's a one-time experience if you do both of the innings I would say it's very similar to Hellblade or Amnesia. Yeah. Where it's yeah, like yeah. you could play it again, but if you played it a second time, you'd be doing it more to look for things you missed. Sure. It wouldn't it wouldn't be to experience it again. Because you can right. really only do that once. Right. Sure. I didn't think I, Amnesia's gameplay was that bad. Would you still compare it to Amnesia if you're an Amnesia fan to play it? If you if you liked Amnesia and you are a fan of Cyberpunk. I think you'll really like Observe. <laughs> it's basically right. it's basically a sci fi it, there there's no question though that the, the observer is so sci fi that if you dislike that genre, there's a you you wouldn't like this is this is cyberpunk. You walk around basically with like a VR lens on yeah. and like the walls are dripping code and you know it's it's very much tech based and then they mix in kind of the like Zeke said, like cutaway horror all the time and you know it's 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 a little bit more intense than amnesia. I would say a little bit more intense, but similar in a lot of ways too. Cool. Uh, Dick, I want to bring you into the conversation, but you didn't play Dauntless oh. either. So I feel like we're going to talk no, you can still. about You're XCOM good. No, no, after the Dauntless. break. Yeah, because Dauntless is about a 15 minute chunk, I feel, in my mind. So we're going we're gonna to do that. I'm also super curious. So I like listening from I have right not, here in the chair. I, I think I have a thing for that. I just have not what do you uploaded mean? it. I think I have, a, I have a key for it. Oh, oh, okay. Well, me and Co. I, I don't know how long Co. paid it. I, I put, I put I in my time thirty to forty hours in it. You put a little bit more than me. I think. I, I think I was around fifteen or twenty. Um, but yeah, let's let's talk about VODs are working again, so we can show some stuff. Uh, my my back of the box quote for this game is, "It'll be good event. It'll be really good when the game starts getting patched. Right now, it's just good." <laughs> that's my back of the line quote because uh, I feel like they've got a great base for this game it, everything that's in there is awesome I just can't stand some of the fucking weird bugs the crashes that happened constantly for me when I was playing was a huge annoyance um, but everything about the game that I played I really enjoyed uh, and, and that's coming from someone that played a lot of Monster Hunter and I'm sure Co. when you stream this 
your chat, much like any other Dauntless chat, devolved into, man, this Monster Hunter is a better game than Dauntless, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Just nonstop. That's all it was for me. Uh, but what, what did you think of Dauntless Co.? Um, honestly, I echo a lot of what you just said. I, I think it's an exceptionally fun game. Uh, I ended up doing a stream with like King of Thalion and Professor Broman. That was a huge amount of fun. We just like went out and slayed monsters for like two or three hours. Yeah. Uh, I played with a lot of my subs. You know, I got a, a guild in there. I mean, it's it's a really great foundation. Um, once they get more weapon variety in, once they get the bugs worked out, once the town gets fleshed out, once those little UI bugs that are all over the place get worked out. I mean, hell, the, the very front page when you logged in on the first two days said Foudner instead of Founder. Like, there were <laughs> seven words on the screen. Yeah, seven. <laughs> and one of them was Foudner. Man, they and, had, and like, my it's, type it's just, of proofreading. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's just, it's very clear that this is the first step. And uh, and and it's alpha to it's just to make perfectly clear. It's not even beta like this is alpha and it feels alpha. But that being said, it's a huge amount of fun. There's a reason that at, even through all the bugs and little issues that I kept playing it. Um, and in to speak to the game's credit, like right now, there's four weapon types, uh, dual blade, axe, hammer and sword. And each one of those has like a little kind of combo skill set. They can all do different things. But within those lines, they all have the same skills, and that's going to change on live completely. You know, there's yeah. a lot of variety and different types of weapons do different things and all sorts of that. And even with that, and even the fact that I only use chain blades all the time, I still had a great time playing it. Um, you know, it's got a little bit of a lag issue. It's also got uh, some weird server side issues. If you get too close to the monsters, those are obviously both complete game breakers if they don't get fixed. And um, but you know, they're working on it. So yeah. it's it's kind of like what you said. You it's it's like. 80 to 90 percent there and once it gets there it's going to be awesome um and right now it's arguably pretty awesome on its own yeah i like i said i had a lot of fun just walking around with uh, it was like me shorty lyric waffle we were all and stripping we were all playing together uh, in different configurations of that uh, set of five and we had a lot of fun some of the bosses this guy specifically was kind of kind of the first big fuck this game actually has difficult things in it i don't know what Dude, have you fought Embermane? Yeah, we we killed Embermane. Uh, that took a while. It took a long yeah. time. Um, that guy was a beast. Strippin's played, I would think, more than most of the people that I've seen. He definitely got farther than I did. He was fighting. There's like three or four monsters above Embermane uh, that he was trying to beat. The one thing that I did kind of not like, and obviously this is something when it comes to balance that they're going to address, is I played Axe. You cannot solo as Axe. It is one of the most difficult classes to play when it comes to soloing and also just in general because of the way the Axe works and like charging it. Every every one of your like big moves is charge based. And with how frantic the mobs move around, it's really hard to just be able to land a charged attack on them. But if you're using the hammer like Strippin, Strippin was soloing Embermane in a lot of his fights because the hammer, when he when he rushes towards you, if you hit him with the the... Hammer has ability where it's kind of like Gears of War where it has ammo on it. It has four things, and to reload it, you hit like a charged reload thing or an active reload thing. But if you hit Embermane when he's rushing towards you with a hammer, he'll like kind of somersault and land on his back, and then you can go beat his ass. So with a hammer, you can solo Embermane pretty easily as long as you hit that a bunch of times. Um, with an axe, you can't. You just sit there and charge it up, and you get fucking destroyed. Uh, I wonder if I should watch my language. Oh, he's got headset on. <laughs> <laughs> uh but yeah, I, that's something I want them to kind of mess around with is trying to balance the different soloing stuff because it kind of sucks to be pigeonholed into a specific weapon if you want to play as a solo character just because you're soloing. They try yeah. they need to make all this viable. Um, that being said, I really enjoyed using the axe. I think you you were using the twin blades or the scythes or whatever you want to call them. How did you? What did you like? Did you like that type of gameplay? Oh yeah, I loved it. The chain blade is is really cool. It's definitely a it's it's an assassin kind of thing where you do a lot of high or lower damage attacks. Uh, what's really cool about it is the special move, quote unquote, with chain blades is to if you're far away, it draws you in, and if you're close, it flips you out and avoids any attacks, which is super awesome. Now the thing is though, is it takes combo points, which are the little red squares under there. You can kind of see them right down there, yeah. and every time you go in or out then it takes the points. But what I found out later that's not listed is uh, the chain blades have a ranged attack where they he kind of they put the like they put the blade all the way at the end of the chain and you actually get some damn decent range. If you use the ability right after one of those hits, it draws you in without using a combo point. 
and then you can spend the point to flip out. So, and, yeah. and you can also do that if you don't have any points worked up. So it makes me wonder like how many other little kind of hidden tricks are there in the game. But once I learned that it kind of, it became night and day. I didn't know that. I don't think in this one. Um, but yeah, it was, uh, it was a lot of fun, very fast, a lot of dodging, uh, felt kind of like an agile dark souls three build. And, um, yeah, the, the only issue is with my build is I tried to play the game like dark souls with this build <laughs> and what that unfortunately did is led me to so many times trying to do split second dodging mm. and just having the lag just destroy me. And the yeah. thing that made it most frustrating is a lot of times when you get lag hit, your character will physically dodge away from the attack. And then while he's standing there uninjured away from the enemy, he'll just wince and take the hit. And it's like, dude, <laughs> like, like, like you, you time it perfectly on your side. But then that little bit of lag on the server end will then apply that damage after you've gotten away. So that's one of those little things that, that we're really hoping get worked out before release because that would be very frustrating to have that be something that you do often. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still go back to this gets me pretty excited for the new Monster Hunter. I thought it was hilarious that the day that this launched into, what, are they calling it an alpha? I guess the yeah, founder's it's alpha. alpha. Yeah, whatever, yeah. I think yeah. close beta starts on the 29th or something like that. Um, the day they launched this monster hunter released a, a teaser or a trailer video for monster hunter, like within the same hour of closed beta launching or closed alpha launching and the trailer coming out. I thought that was very well timed. It was a very blizzard esque move. Uh, and the trailer they put out is fucking awesome, uh, for, for monster hunter. So I can't wait to jump into that, but I think this game's going to be free to play. So it's going to be a nice kind of jump in. Um, I think both games obviously can coexist. It's a genre that doesn't have too many crossovers. I think there's maybe, or too many games in it. There's probably like one or two other games, uh, of similar fashion. And the other one's a little bit more weeb focused, uh, <laughs> with the name. I can't remember. <laughs> it, it's in a term of endearment, Co. It's a term of endearment. Uh, yep. <laughs> I can't chat. will tell me the other name of it soon. Uh, yeah. Tu yeah. Tukadin, I think is the name of it. It's not too bad. I saw Strip and play a bunch of it. Uh, and does it actually go free to play? Oh, that was a while ago, right? What Tukadin? Yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember watching Strip and play that like a couple, like a couple months ago or a month and a half ago. I was like, "What is this game?" And I just went in. I thought it was playing an MMO or something. Huh. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, What's I kind of funny is I've actually never played a Monster Hunter game on any console. So the first kind of Monster Hunter experience I had was Dauntless. And uh, knowing that my community just kept telling me over and over, kind of like you just said about it, they keep telling you to compare them. My community kept going, oh, Co, you think this is good. Like, <laughs> like, like, just wait until Monster Hunter. You are going to love Monster Hunter. So I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, getting, I'm getting pretty excited for the new Monster Hunter, to be honest. Yeah. So it, Monster Hunter has years of game development on it and depth being added on through each game, uh, which will definitely add to that. Uh, Richard, to answer your question on when this come, when this goes free to play, I want to say they haven't said, but for some reason I also want to say early 2018. I don't, I don't know. That sounds that sounds right. I think is that they, was the last thing they talked about. So is the pay model going to be boosts, advantages, cosmetic, or boosts and cosmetic? Yeah. yeah. So it'll be, will it be one of those games where you pay like five dollars a month to keep up with everybody? I don't know. Probably, but I Probably. don't think they've announced the, yeah. the thing yet. They, they've also, they kind of have an in-game chest system or, you know, like like a crate system with these things they call, like whenever you beat around, you get these breakable items that you can then go to a, a kiosk in town and you put it in and it gives you like rare materials and stuff like that. And if you're a founder, then you start with some of those. And I'm assuming they'll probably just like have you buy a boost orb or whatever, and then you'll yeah. break that and get your boosts and things like that. Yeah. Uh, these these post uh, victory screens are also kind of they're cool but they're also a little bit weird and buggy because you get shots of a bush like that <laughs> and then this this upcoming animation where you get your uh like vials that, that what Ko was just talking about the chest um you might actually see the bonus did everyone have founders here or were you guys given the game uh i think we all had founders at this point okay yeah yeah, yeah so these style cores right here are those extra chests that uh while Co's cursor on the screen is fucking with me because I think that's mine. Uh, these four style cores are the the bonus stuff that he was talking about, Richard. Um, and they they help out 
a little bit. Like getting the bonuses gets you weapons a little bit faster. You don't have to kill the mob as many times, or gets you upgrades a little bit faster. Um, I've been interested to try the genre, but the pay model there, eighty bucks, just steep. Yeah, you can probably steep. talk. To, you might be able to. To yeah, I know, but then I'm still promoting it to my viewers, and if I want yeah. my viewers to play with me, it's like you're buying an eighty dollar alpha that's totally. gonna be free. Yeah, Without it's tough, man. I will say on the aspect of the game company working with streamers they've done some really cool stuff uh, specifically one of the big things in the game are these beacons these like flares you can send out the flares yeah Yeah. so if you're not in like a voice com or anything with anyone you can say hey i'm gonna flare that usually means come over here there's a monster or there's something you can pick up and i think we saw it earlier king of thallion i don't know if yeah, yeah ko does ko has an emblem as well um they have like the streamers logos in games when you flare so when Ko flares, his logo will pop up in the sky in like a big, really fucking cool looking way. Um, and that's and what's a, even cooler is cool when you're playing with like other streamers, because then when someone like normally when you send up a flare, you can pick like founder F- Foudner flare or, you know, <laughs> you can pick city flare or you can pick side flare. So but they all look the same and everyone gets access to them generally. But when you have the logo flares. Like, and you're playing with other people, and I know this is a really rare occasion, um, but when you're actually playing with other people that have it, like, when you see a flare, you're like, oh, it's, it's King of Thallion. Or, <laughs> like, oh, it's yeah. Broman, it's right over there. <laughs> so that was kind of cool. And that led me to kind of think, like, I kind of do hope that they give more flare customization, because I'd also like players yeah. to be able to do that. Because if you're playing, like, there was a couple times when I was playing with, like, three subs... And, you know, one of them had my flare and the other two had founder flares. And it's like when those go up, you're just kind of like, OK, so wait, who who is where and what, you know, and they don't really give you an option to customize them. So it seems like that would be something that they would really let the player customize. So you could easily tell where everyone in your team is. Yeah, but, I, know I know that uh, they were giving codes to streamers to give their flares to viewers. So there was a yeah, sense we got of, like 50 of them. yeah, yeah, there was a sense of like you can create a community community around that. And I think it's going to be, like you are saying, easily changeable. I just don't know what system they can use where the normal user isn't just going to make a bunch of dicks or something and use those as their, their That's their true. That's, that's a really good point. Yeah. So that's a really good that's point. Gonna, they do have a, a we'll pretty good in-game emblem and shield de- design system where you can, like, you know, make your – you can put down, a, like, a banner – and uh, also your guild gets a banner. And, you know, they've got lots of different options in customizing those in uh, they have basically it's like a build your own system that keeps all that negative stuff out of it. Um, they could probably do something like that for flares. Yeah. Have it pick like explosion type color uh, size, like what's in the middle of it. I mean, they could they could they could throw something together, but I'm sure that's true. low on the priority list. And they have a lot of other stuff to focus on first. <laughs> yeah, we, me and Anne had this idea of each streamer taking a letter of the alphabet. So then when you group with people, you can have like hashtag ass or something. Up in the sky. So we were already thinking of ways to like break the system. And we're not, we're just fucking asshole streamers. So I can already see people being like, all right, we're going to put a dick there. Then we're going to use a circle and put that as the second one. All right, dick goes circle. Go. Okay. And the third one, we're going to put just some dashes, just two dashes next to the d- I can see people doing that, which might be fun. I don't know. Uh, maybe, maybe that's what they want is get people to have fun in the game. Um, but yeah, I, th- I think that's Dauntless. I, I don't know. Zeke or, or Richard, any, from the observer point of view, what, any questions, comments, are you guys interested in it at all? I know most of you said you haven't jumped into Monster for, Hunter. I want to wait for Monster Hunter, I think. But I'm just, if I'm going to do it, I want to do it right, I think. I haven't touched the genre before. I wanted to play with it, but streaming DS, you know how that goes. Yeah. So. I feel like. Are you big? Hunter guy, Dick? No, I, I've never gotten in, gotten into it, but I'd like to try it. Okay. I feel like it would be up my alley, and it's hard to find games like that that actually do well on broadcast. Yeah, for me anyway. Yeah, yeah, this game did pretty I'm, well, I think. I'm yeah. still mad about it. Still mad. Meh. Meh. Um, I'm trying to bring up that Monster Hunter trailer. Here we go. This game looks. Whew. Looks pretty. Oh, wait. Is this the one that came out? This is the initial trailer, isn't it? June 12th. Fuck. I need the August one. Where's the August one? Is this it? Yeah. Look at this fucking trailer. Look how goddamn pretty this game looks. It just looks unbelievably good. Especially compared to the art style of Dauntless. I This, this art style is so much better. 
to me. It just looks awesome. I hope it runs as fluid as it looks in this. They have a huge roster of mobs in also, it already. Also, I gotta say, the monsters in Monster Hunter look so much more epic. Yeah. Like, just in terms of size and kind and of that, weight. I will. This is like basic-ass shit. These are like basic fucking mobs. You, you fight like three or four of those at a time in Monster Hunter eventually. Uh, there's... In, in Monster Hunter Try, there was a dragon that you have to go out and like get on a raft and eventually you're like on the dragon's back, kind of like Shadow of Colossus style, crawling up them and fighting them and, and that shit was super fucking epic. It was really cool. Uh, so I'd be super down to, to see what they kind of do in the same vein as this. They show some bigger monsters here towards the end of this. Um, there's a giant like dragon monster towards the end of this trailer, which looks real rad. But graphically, this just looks so much cooler. Um, I think this comes out in 2018. Some maybe. I don't know the date on this. I think it'll say at the end. They have guns. Are they doing any kind of alpha or beta or anything like that? I don't know. I don't know. I'm gonna try to uh, see if they're in. They'll probably want to work with streamers, so you could probably contact them and see if they're gonna do anything like that. I think. I think they usually do betas and stuff to test netcode. But then again, it is Capcom, the people that put out. Street Fighter Five this year, <laughs> so <laughs> like, who knows? Who knows? There, there's the big guy a uh, little bit, uh, so who knows how that would go? Um, Someone said if you make a Japanese account, you can play it, play the demo. Oh really? I didn't know that. Switch. Did not know that. I don't know if that's true. I just saw it in chat. No. Uh, so yeah, that's Monster Hunter Worldwide. Our world. And and they're saying March for release, so it's not that far. Is it March? Let's see. That's what chat was saying. Uh, a yeah, bunch it says, people. Monster Hunter World comes to PlayStation 4, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, early 2018 with a PC version coming at a later date. So Nice. Yeah, I'm interested to see that. Uh, we are due for a break. I think me and uh, Mr. Richard Hammer are going to talk a bunch of XCOM when we come back. We got Indie Sunday stuff to talk about that or whatever day Zeke's on this week. <laughs> indie games. <laughs> was it? I, nah, I got, I got two to talk about. Okay, all right. One that you suggested. Oh, yeah. We get to hear of my suggestion. was shit. I'm excited. Yep. I'm excited about and that. And then uh, uh, West of Loathing. Cool. Cool. Oh, yeah. wait. Are we moving on to, like, games, XCOM, and then news? Uh, when we come back, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Real quick before we go. Okay. Uncharted Lost Legacy is awesome. No, I want to talk I want to talk about that in a little bit more in depth when we come back. That's where okay, we'll leave good. off. We'll start with that, and we'll go into XCOM. So we're going to take a break real quick. We'll be right back. Talking all the stuff we just said. We'll see you then.